not a horrible idea, but I can't reach it. Besides, that light bulb looks like it wouldn't fit. Free light bulb? Score! The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. There we go. Various books and office supplies. Nothing in particular catches the eye. briefcase sealed by a combination lock. Nope, that's not it. Just some old bills. Nothing interesting. A worn office chair on wheels. I'm feeling a sudden urge to do a race. An old typewriter covered in cobwebs. A thick book about math. Decades old coffee. Lovely. Uh, yeah, I'm good, thanks. Might be something useful in there. Might be something useful in there. Nothing. Empty. Mr. Bear! <laughs> How did you get all the way up there? Good idea. You just keep watch. I'll do the searching. Oh, hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? I found a locked briefcase in the attic. Do you know anything about it? Oh, that old thing? Joseph said there were just some old boring Air Force papers in there. If that was the case, why use an intricate combination lock? That's a very good question, dear. In any case, I wouldn't know how to open it. See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. Yeah, that would have been too easy. I doubt the book alone is enough to solve this. A 
leather briefcase sealed by a combination lock. That action doesn't seem productive to me. It's a phone book, Conwell Springs County. No result for that. Nope, couldn't find it. Might want to pick up the handle first. Hi, this is Eileen speaking. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I don't need to ask her about that. I've got this briefcase with a combination lock here. Yeah, so? Well, you're a geek. You must know some way to crack the code, right? You watch too many movies, Kathy. Come on, help me out. <sighs> How many digits? Six. That'll be too hard to brute force. Maybe whoever set the code left some kind of reminder around? Most people are careless about that sort of thing. I looked, but couldn't find anything too obvious. Then I'm out of ideas. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. I must be missing something. What was that weird first message on the tape? to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I've been working on my research and... Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, Yes! A thick yellow envelope. It's the envelope I found in the briefcase. Let's see what's in here. There were two pictures, a newspaper clipping, a key, and a tape inside. Looks overexposed. I can't make much out. I think I see trees in the background, but most of the picture is just bright white. 
There's probably some way to enhance this back at school. I'll figure it out tomorrow when I'm back. Grandpa in uniform with two other men. Something is handwritten on the back. Flight training. McConnell Air Force Base, 1941. That combination makes no sense. Tragic drowning in Conwell Springs. In early morning on Sunday the 14th, a teenage girl found dead near Conwell Lake. The girl is survived by her mother, father, and younger brother. The funeral service will be held at Conwell Cemetery on the 21st of July. The notice is dated July 15th, 1975. Tragic story. I wonder why Grandpa saved this. It's a small key, fairly modern design, no identifying tag, unfortunately. I wonder what this unlocks. Standard microtape labeled answering machine. It should play fine in Mr. Dicto. The tape I found in the briefcase. It seems that it was used in an answering machine at some point. You've reached the rain residence. Leave a message after the beep. Hello, Joseph, Mrs. Rain. It's me, Charles. I thought I'd give you a call. Erica just had her firstborn. It's a boy. Thankfully, he looks nothing like his father. Uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you'd like to come and visit. And what about your little Kathy? Maybe she wants to see the baby. Well, anyways, I hope to see you soon. All the best. Bye. You people make me sick. We're never coming back. Don't call, don't write. If you ever try to contact us, I will call the police. Joseph, you there? It's me, Cocky. I, it happened to me, too. And I'm not going to tell any of those bastards. They got it all wrong. You're the only one I trust now. Just call me back as soon as you can. Hmm. I wonder who this cocky is. Oh, hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Can you tell me anything about McConnell Air Force Base? It's not very far from Conwell Springs. Joseph was stationed there for some time during the war. I believe they're still training young pilots there today. So, when did Grandpa enlist in the Air Force? Oh, it was barely past the honeymoon when Joseph left to fight in that terrible war together with his best friend Charles and my brother Andrew. Those were nerve-wracking years. I was so worried, I thought I would burst. Every short visit from Joseph was a joy, but he kept going back to the front, to my great dismay. When I told Joseph about being pregnant with your father, he finally realized that enough was enough. He had done his duty. Shortly thereafter, he returned to a quiet farmer's life in this very house, helping your great-grandfather with the crops until he passed. Do you know anything about a young girl drowning around here? Oh, yes. It was the saddest thing. She was only 16. We never really knew the family. They preferred to keep to themselves. Do you remember the name of the girl or her family? Awfully sorry, dear. I, I just can't recall. That's okay, Grandma. I was just wondering why Grandpa would have wanted to save this. Joseph was always affected by the tragedy of others. Perhaps he wanted to do something for the family. In any case, he didn't speak to me about it. 
Does the nickname Cocky mean anything to you? Sounds vaguely familiar. It reminds me of the aviator call signs Joseph and his friends gave one another. Joseph was vigilante. I can't count the number of times he got into trouble for breaking the rules. To this day, I have no idea how he always managed to land on his feet. <laughs> Must be hereditary, given the things I've gotten away with. Every time I wake up, I am genuinely surprised that I'm not in jail. <laughs> I'm sure it's not that bad, dear. But to get back to the subject, you don't have any idea of who this cocky is? I'm afraid not, but the Air Force might be a good place to start. I don't see a reason to ask her about that. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. Hey, Lenny. Hello, Kathy. What's up? Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Hey, Lenny, do you remember anything about a girl drowning around here? Yeah, I remember my mom telling me about that. I was like six at the time, though. Do you remember her name? Oh, man, not really. I was so little. I think it was something with an L. Linda? Laura? Something like that. All right, I'll keep looking. Nah, I don't want to ask him about that. Well, gotta go. See ya. Hello, Sheriff. Mind if I ask you a few more questions? If you must. I don't need to ask him that. Do you know anything about the drowning here in 1975? 16-year-old girl? You have a memory problem? I told you I haven't been working here that long. Besides, even if I did, I wouldn't tell you. Juvenile cases are a sensitive matter. I don't need to ask him that. That's all for now. Good. Tons of miscellaneous files. I don't see anything labeled as police reports, so those must be elsewhere. I would, but I can't do that when he's right there. Maybe I can distract him somehow. Fax machines, the pinnacle of modern technology. Lanny, need you to do something. Various notices and a us? wanted poster. It's my mother's birthday this weekend. You'll have to get her a gift. Uh, gift? Like what? I don't really know your mother. Christ, sake, hey. Hi there. Uh, could you distract Lenny again? Sure, I needed to puke again anyway. Good to know. I'll need a key. That combination makes no sense. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll know where to look. Guess what? He's having some kind of fit in there. <sighs> Not again. Here we go again. Hmm, maybe there's something in here about that drowning. Nope, looks like I'm gonna need her name. 
Lots of police reports organized alphabetically by the looks of it. I got the key already. I don't think I need to mess with that anymore. Hey, it's me, Kat. Oh, hi, what's up? I'm trying to track down this young girl who drowned in the lake here. Okay. How hard can a dead person be to track down? They tend to stay in one place, you know. Ha, huh, very funny, E. I don't even know her name, just when she died. Oh, well, there must be some way to connect a name to that date. Yeah, maybe. I don't need to ask her about that. I'm trying to find this guy, but all I have is his nickname, Cocky. Well, what do you know about the guy? Not much. I think he was in the Air Force and served with Grandpa. Maybe you could try to find somebody in the Air Force who knew him then? Yeah, that might be worth a shot. Okay, gotta go. Talk to you later. Bye, Kathy. A bunch of cops lining up for a photo. All right, this is the right date. Looks like her name was Lily Myers. I should try to get a hold of her family. I wonder what that kid is doing here all alone. A little boy, maybe five or six years old. Hey, kid. All yourself. What are you doing? None of your business. Huh, I like you, kid. You're not here alone, right? Where's your mom? Oh, she's around. I don't see her. You must be blind or something. I'll go look for your mom, okay? Don't go anywhere. Whatever. I'm gonna find out what happened to you, Grandpa. I promise. Conwell Springs. Looks smaller than I remember it. No reason to go in there. A family mausoleum. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. It says, Price. I shouldn't leave while that kid is alone. Kid? Guess he found his mom. <laughs> 